Hi all, my name is Vishnu Dutt and in this video we will explore the concept of virtual networks in SDXs which is quite similar to VRFs or virtual routing and forwarding in traditional networking. Once again, we will stick to our strategy of learning new concepts by comparing them with legacy concepts. Okay, hence we will compare VRF concept in traditional or legacy networking with virtual networks in SDXs. Okay guys. So let's begin. Consider this diagram. On left hand side, we have a router, this one, right? We all know that this router has several characteristics. On a very high level, it has a routing information base where it stores information regarding various routes and a forwarding information base which is used to switch packets between the interfaces, correct? Routing information base is actually the control plane of the router and forwarding information base is its data plane. When a packet arrives on a particular interface of this router, it is the responsibility of data plane to forward this packet towards a particular interface based on forwarding information base, right? If this router has all the necessary information to forward the packet in its FIB or forwarding information base, it will forward the packet. Otherwise, it will consult the control plane or routing information base to forward this packet, correct? It's simple. So without going into too much details, we know that a router maintains routing and switching tables so that it can forward the packets. Now imagine a single router that has more than one routing and switching tables, which are completely isolated from each other. Is it possible? If yes, what is the use case? One of the use case might be that I want to create two separate isolated networks. For example, I want to create a network for all the employees of an organization and other network for the organization's IoT devices. These two networks don't need to talk to each other and should be completely isolated. One solution is to have two different sets of routers for these two networks, right? But this solution will not scale because we need to have more routers if I want more isolated networks. Virtual routing and forwarding or VRF technology solves this issue. With VRF, you can create multiple isolated virtual routers inside a single router. So here you can see we have two more routers, this orange one and the purple one, right? These virtual routers are logically inside the same router. We also call these virtual routers as virtual forwarding and routing instance or VRFs. So I could give names to these VRFs. One of the important characteristic of these VRFs is that they have their own routing information base and forwarding information base. Okay, so this virtual router or VRF will have its own RIB or routing information base and forwarding information base or FIB, right? Similarly, this virtual router will have its own RIB and FIB, correct? Important thing to note here is that global routing table or GRT will also be present at this router and we call it as default VRF. So if we don't create any VRF in a router, we have only default VRF, which contains global routing table or GRT. In other words, we can say that default VRF will also have its own RIB and FIB. Correct guys? So if we create two VRFs, we will be having three routing information base and three forwarding information base. Correct? Another important thing is that we need to assign interfaces to a particular VRF. Right? By default, all interfaces are part of default VRF. Hence, we need to manually assign the interfaces to a particular VRF. You can also assign sub interfaces to VRFs. Okay. You can create VRFs on layer three switches and hence you can assign switched virtual interfaces to be part of a particular VRF. So if this router were a switch, this one, different SVIs along with physical layer three interfaces could have been part of the VRF. Okay. Although in this diagram, I have explained VRF concept with the help of a router, but this explanation is absolutely true in case of layer three switch also, provided that 
it supports VRFs. Okay, so far so good. Now consider this part, this one. Here we are talking about two routers having same VRFs configured. Let's give them a name. Suppose this VRF name is VRF A and this VRF name is VRF B. On this router also we have VRF A and VRF B. Host A, this one is attached to VRF A on this router and host B is attached to VRF B on this second router. Okay, so here is the problem. How we can make them talk to each other? Which means how a particular host that is a part of VRF A on this router can talk to host in the same VRF A on this router. There are several techniques through which you can make these hosts talk to each other. One of the very simple technique is that you can assign an interface to a VRF. Okay, here. Suppose this interface is FA0 slash uh, 1. Similarly, you can assign an interface on this router also. Let's say this interface is also FA0 slash 1. Connect these with the cable and now host A can talk to host B, right? Very simple. But again, we see another issue. In this solution, if you need to extend a VRF to another router, you need a physical interface, which means you need more physical interfaces if you need to add more virtual routing and forwarding instances or VRFs. Hence, this solution is not scalable. So how we can resolve this issue? We can resolve the issue by using sub interfaces with dot one q. Yes, correct. We have used dot one q or trunk in connecting two switches having more than one VLANs, right? So instead of having two separate interfaces, we can have only one interface and can create sub interfaces out of them, right? In this case, we can say, FA0 slash 1.1 is part of VRF A on this router and FA0 slash 1.2 is part of VRF B. Okay, correct. Similarly, we can assign sub interfaces here also on in this router. FA0 slash 1.1 is here and FA0 slash 1.2 is here. Now when host now when host A sends a packet towards host B, this router, this one slaps a dot one q header which consists of a dot one q tag value suppose on both of these routers fa0 slash 1.1 sub interfaces we have configured the tag value of 10 okay here is the ip packet generated by host a so before placing this ip packet on this sub interface this router slaps a dot one q header or dot one q tag value of 10 when the destination router receives this packet with dot one q tag value of 10, it exactly knows that this packet is for host B in VRF A. This technique is also known as VRF light. There are many techniques which can extend VRFs and in service provider networks, VRFs can be extended using MPLS VPNs. So enough talk on VRFs. Now let's discuss virtual networks in SD access. Consider right hand side of the diagram. In SD access, VRFs are known as virtual networks. You can create virtual networks for complete isolation between traffic and devices of one VN or one virtual network with another virtual network. By default, SD access fabric devices consist of three virtual networks. First one is global routing table or GRT. All fabric devices, which is Edge and border devices make underlay connectivity in this VRF. Second virtual network is infra VN, which is used for wireless access point and extended nodes. Third one is default VN, and all the users and devices are part of this virtual network by default. The important part is you can create multiple user virtual networks in SD access. So you can create as many virtual networks depending on the need of your organization. For example, you can have employee and IoT virtual network here to isolate traffic of employees and IoT devices, correct? But if you don't create any user virtual networks or VNs, all the users will be part of default VN. Now the question arises, if everything is same as legacy VRF, 
why SDXS has chosen a different name for the same VRF concept. So the difference is, unlike VRFs, SDXS fabric does not require a separate routing table per virtual network. This is because LISP or Location Identity Separation Protocol in SDXS provides all control plane forwarding information. It makes sense, right? Otherwise, if two hosts in SDXS fabric want to communicate in the same VRF presents, present on two different edge switches, we need to extend it using legacy techniques like VRF Lite or MPLS, correct? Let's discuss my last statement in detail as it is important to understand SDXS fabric. So here we have two edge switches, edge switch one and edge switch two. Switch one is configured with two virtual networks, that is virtual network employee and virtual network IoT. The second switch is also configured with VNs, employee and IoT. Suppose two hosts, host A and host B, are part of employee virtual network. Host A is connected to H switch 1 and host B is connected to H switch 2. We also have a control plane node which tracks the location of all the hosts here, this one. Now let's see how SDXS assures that traffic for a particular virtual network should remain in the same virtual network. The beauty is that in SDXS fabric, there is no need of extending these virtual networks using VRF Lite or other such techniques that we used in legacy networks here. So when host A wants to communicate with host B, as a first step, the edge switch one asks about the location of host B from its control plane node using LISP. Here is a control plane node, okay? Of course, this control plane node should be reachable in global routing table. As you can see, we have two loopback interfaces configured in global routing table or GRT virtual network. The IP address of this loopback is 10.1.1.1 and the IP address of this loopback interface is 10.1.1.2. As you can see, these loopback interfaces are reachable over this green link, which is part of GRT and OSPF routing protocol is running over this link, okay? This link is also known as underlay. So our control plane node replies that host B is connected to a switch with remote location or R lock value as 10.1.1.2. Now switch one knows that it needs to forward the packet from host A to remote location 10.1.1.2 in its global routing table to reach host B. Right guys? Now this switch, this one, has to make sure, has to make sure that the packet reaches to correct VRF on destination switch or this switch to, correct? To make this happen, switch one maps each virtual network with a unique layer three VNI value. Let's say layer three VNI value mapped with employee virtual network is 4000 and IoT virtual network is 5000. So before sending this packet, this one, to switch to, switch one slaps a layer three VNI value in the VXLAN header and send the encapsulation IP packet across or over underlay this link, okay? So here the VNI value will be 4000 in this packet, right guys? Switch2 will have the same layer three VNI values associated with its virtual networks, right? When this packet reaches here at edge switch two, this switch exactly knows in which VRF it needs to forward the packet. As the layer 3 VNI value is 4000 in this incoming packet, switch 2 will forward the packet to employee virtual network. Similarly, host inside IoT virtual networks can talk to each other, right? This all happens in LISP and LISP has a unique instance ID for each virtual network. So in SDXS fabric, without using VRF Lite and other techniques, we were able to communicate in a VRF using layer three VNI. So if you look at it closely, with the help of layer three VNI, we have created a logical link, which is actually using the underlay in global routing table, right? We also call this link as an overlay. This overlay is shown with the, with the orange line, this one here. 
and it is identified with a layer 3 BNI value. Similarly, an overlay will be created for IoT virtual network with L3 BNI value of 5000 if hosts in IoT wants to communicate with each other. This overlay is shown with a purple line here, this one, right? So far, uh, so far we are good. If we communicate inside SD fabric, we can talk via overlays, correct? But what happens if we want to communicate outside SD fabric? Or what happens when a host in a particular virtual network in SDA fabric wants to communicate to legacy world? Or how a host in a particular virtual network wants to communicate to a different virtual network? All these questions are the basis of our next video where we will discuss about SDXS border and fusion nodes. I hope you have enjoyed this video. See you in next one.